The Ukraine is the largest country in Europe. Its area is 231-990 square miles and it has a population of 46 million. Until 1991, the Ukraine was part of the Soviet Union. Kiev is the capital of the Ukraine. We first visited these prehistoric sculptures. They are pagan gods. Kiev is one of the oldest cities in Eastern Europe and has preserved its charm over the centuries. There are many beautiful churches and cathedrals in Kiev. This is the lovely domed St. Sophia Cathedral, completed in 1037. It contains many lovely, fascinating frescoes and mosaics. <laughs> This is Main Square, Kiev, where one can stand and admire the beautiful architecture. visited the Monastery of the Caves, correctly known as Holy Assumption Monastery or Holy Assumption Cathedral. The Monastery of the Caves was founded by monks in 1051. Unfortunately this is only a replica. It is a complex of domed churches and museums surrounded by 17th century houses set above the caves that have served as religious tombs for hundreds of years. The main church boasts one of Europe's highest bell towers. In the passageway of the caves lays the mummies of monks who have been laid to rest. This is the view from the Monastery of the Caves looking out over Kiev. The view is truly magnificent.
This is the Victory Statue, a war memorial. We next visited Pachenkin's Palace. This was built in the 17th century. Catherine the Great stayed at this palace. The decor is truly magnificent. We were next invited to view a palace of culture where we were shown the beautiful stained glass windows. Palaces of culture were built in Soviet times and can best be described as theatres. They provided subsidised cultural entertainment. Our next port of call was Odessa. This is the main square of Odessa. The building in the back is the Communist Party headquarters. The statue in the front of the building is Lenin. During Soviet times many parades took place on this square. Odessa is one of the Ukraine's largest cities and the most significant commercial centre. Odessa was heavily influenced by the French and Italian styles and therefore resembles a Mediterranean town. The current population is over one million inhabitants. We next visited the War Memorial. The young people guarding the War Memorial are not naval cadets, they are school children, specially chosen for this position. This is the eternal flame. The eternal flame. These stones are dedicated to those who lost their lives in war.
زیبای زبایانش جزدیه خومیته رودی زیبی میچ دون پرنیسیتی چریز یکار ای شریز یونکونیته то уже не придет никогда. Заклинаю. Помните. The Patolskin Stairway. The Patolskin Stairway is the city's symbol and leads from the harbour to the Pinmonsky Boulevard, Odessa's most magnificent street. The stairway is 142 metres long, 30 metres high and contains 192 steps. The steps are divided by 10 landings. They become wider going from top to bottom. This characteristic provides a good optical illusion when standing on the top of the stairs. These stairs were featured in the film The Battleship Potonskin. This is the Odessa Opera House, one of the most magnificent buildings in the whole of the Ukraine. The White Town. The White Town is situated 86 kilometers from Odessa and right next to the river Nest. The first settlers were the Greeks and the Romans. Later it was under Cossack, Tartar, Romanian and Russian rule. Stephen I of Moldania had one of the largest fortresses in the Ukraine built here in the 13th century. It provides an excellent view of the estuary of the river and is therefore of great strategic significance. The fortress walls expand to a length of two kilometers and the moat is six meters deep. This well-preserved fortress has 26 turrets and four gates. the central point tower within the complex.
the main gate and the bridge over the moat leading into the town. We next proceeded to Sevastopol, where the naval band was there to welcome us. Sevastopol, with a population of almost 400,000, has a highly developed fishing and shipping industry. Sevastopol Bay is a lovely natural harbour and the principal base of the Russian Black Sea Fleet since the early 19th century. This is a magnificent view looking down upon the bay. the Byzantine St. Vladimir Cathedral. This cathedral is set up high overlooking the city. The bullet holes have been left in the cathedral wall in remembrance of the wartime atrocities. Because British were not here. British were sorting the red and bastion of Big Tooth. Russians and French died on Malakhov Hill. French were taking it, Russians were defending it. The common grave and the end of the monument to a hero of the Crimean War, Russian Admiral Karnilov, Karnilov, K-O-R-N-I-L-O-V, Karnilov, who was mortally wounded at this very spot where you can see the cross. This is the place where he was mortally wounded. The cross is made out of the cannonballs. Can you look back? We then took a boat trip around the lovely Sevastopol Harbour. the Russian and Ukrainian fleets. The statue of Saint Andrew. We next visited 
Chur Sons. Chur Sons is on a peninsula three kilometres southwest from Servastovo. This is the main square. It is called Argara. Argara from the Greek. The town was founded in 422 BC and was completely destroyed by the Tartars in the late 14th century. The main attraction of the excavation site is this row of marble columns which are the ruins of an early Christian church. This excavation is believed to be a mint where counterfeit money was produced. Yes, even in those days there was counterfeiting. This is the theatre, the Roman theatre. This theatre was closed when Christianity took over in the early A.D.s. Chusun experienced wars and economic boom periods during that time as well as annexation to the Roman and Byzantine empires attacked by the nomads and in 988 AD was conquered by the Russians. We next proceeded to Yalta. This is one of the magnificent scenic views that we enjoyed on the journey. Gorbachev, the smaller one, premises for guests, bodyguards, and the service staff. A little bit further along the road, there will be possibility along this highway, a lot of Ukrainian bosses, members of Ukrainian parliament and Ukrainian president, they have their dachas along the southern coast of the Crimean. The Swallow's Nest, an ornate fairy tale reconstruction of a medieval Danube castle built as the home of a German oil baron. The castle was built in 1911 for the oil baron's mistress. Unfortunately, she did not like the castle and she never lived in it. The castle clings precariously to the rock 40 metres above the sea. The White Palace. The White Palace was commissioned by Tsar Nicholas II. It was built in 1911. The Tsar built this palace for his family as a summer residence. 
1945, the Yalta Conference between Roosevelt, Stalin and Churchill took place in this palace. Roosevelt resided in the palace during the conference. After this hectic touring, we spent an afternoon relaxing in Yalta. In the 19th century, Yalta became a fashionable health resort and today is a popular destination for native and foreign tourists. In 1883, Yalta was granted city rights the Khan's Palace. This city, palace, is a reminder of the fairy tale of 1001 Nights with the boat palace, the mosque and the typical Turkish buildings. The architecture is a mixture of various architectural styles because the construction time exceeded 200 years and evolved architects coming from Russia, Italy, Turkey and the Ukraine. Each style of architecture brought in elements of their national art. The Kars Mosque, whose minuet rises high above the other buildings, is truly impressive. The interior is bathed in light by windows made out of coloured glass with tartar ornaments. Even the Russian poet Pushkin appreciated it and even dedicated a poem to it. It is thanks to this poem that the palace was not destroyed like all other Crimean Tatar cultural monuments after Stalin's 1944 command to deport the Crimean Tartans. Balaclava. These caves were where the Russian nuclear submarine fleet were based. This area was a closed area to Western citizens. The Italian Fort.
the Italian fault. Balaclava has a very deep natural harbour. Throughout history, Balaclava has been a naval base. Balaclava was a significant Greek trade centre in its early days. In the Middle Ages it belonged to the Genoa Empire until it was conquered by the Turks in 1475. Today it is a peaceful seaside resort. The tower, the panorama, where Lord Palmerston stood to authorise the charge of the Life Brigade. These houses are on the spot where the Russian guns were situated. The Crimean War, 1853 to 18. 56. Over these fields is where the Life Brigade charged. We then visited a Russian house. This Russian family kindly showed us around their home and we were able to see how typical Russian people live. It was now time to sit back and relax and cruise down the Nipper River. The River Nipper is the most significant river in the Ukraine and the third longest in Europe. The river has its source in the Russian heights in Moscow, flows through White Russia and the Ukraine and finally empties into the Black Sea. The river cuts Ukraine in half.
one hopes they do not have to wait too long for the ferry. In this area, the ferry provides a bus service. One of the many beautiful dachas, summer houses, summer palaces, by the side of the river. Sapor Roski. This enormous dam that is connected to a hydroelectric power station divides the city into two halves. There are nine turbines. The dam was built in the 30s. Forced labour was used. The town is more than 200 years old and is situated 600 kilometres southeast of Kiev. From the 9th to the 13th century, this region had a very large Slavic population. The Slavs left the region in the 13th century because of the Golden Mob invasion. The Cossacks became the rulers in the 15th and 16th century. This area became the centre of Cossack civilization. The town itself was founded much later and its origins go back to the year 1770. The first settlers were Russian soldiers and their families. We then sailed back to Kiev, where we visited the open air village museum. This is the village school. The village features more than 200 wooden buildings brought from all over the Ukraine, ranging from typical thatch peasant cottages, taverns and farmhouses to churches and windmills. This is the inside of a priest house. Simple village wooden church. Typical peasant homes.
A final view of Kiev.